Hey everybody, Steve here with Zoo Adventures. Rhino, you want to be here, right? Rhino, I want you to be, you want to be here? And we would love for you to be here too. We have an amazing announcement and some pretty cool information to share with you. We are at the North Carolina Zoo's BOMA. It's kind of like a, a corral for, and here you go. This is new name. You guys ready? You tuned in for the naming. And that's Jojo. Hi, Jojo. Oh, squeak. And Linda is mom, right, her mom right behind. You saw Stacy and Jade throwing some treats out for them. Little shout out to Jade. She's our new animal management supervisor up here. Congratulations, Jade. Whoop, whoop. So Jojo was born February 24th. When, he, when she was born, she weighed ah, around 100 pounds. So today, what is that? January 24th, February 24th, March 24th, April 24th. So two and a half months later, what do you think she weighs? She weighed in at 100 pounds-ish when she was born. Two and a half months later, JoJo's pushing the scales at just under... 400 pounds. She's put 300 pounds on in two and a half months. Two and a half? March, February, February, March, April, yeah, two and a half months. That's some serious quarantine goals, Steve. Well, you know, that's how they play, all right? That's how they're going to play it out. She's not eating a whole lot of solid food yet. It's awesome. We get to talk to the keepers, and they said she's kind of mouthing food. She's kind of mouthing things. She sees her mom, Linda. And here's her mom, Linda, right here. She mouths some food, but all, all that weight comes from the milk, from that really rich milk that mom produces. Mom, Linda, about 31 years old. Linda's a pretty special uh, gal around here. If you've been to the zoo before, hands up if you've been to the zoo. Oh, I, wait, I can't see you, sorry. I guess you could do the fake hands up thing. Linda is related to every female that's on Habitat except for one. She's either the mom or grandmother of every female on Habitat. She's not, she's not related to Natalie. Those of you that might have been on the zoo, Sufar, uh, one of our Zufari experiences. No, 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 no. Wendy, 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 Wendy. Over here, over here. But, that's an ostrich. We're talking about rhinos. Yes. But, but no, no, no butts. That's Pearl, yes. Pearl, they know Pearl. Hi, Pearl. No, no, back, back here, back here, back okay. here. Okay, thank you. Jeez. <laughs> I get easily distracted. And you should. And you should. So, yeah, there's Jojo. Jojo, she's, he's getting, she's getting a little more bold. She's venturing away from mom a little bit. You can see the little tiny horns already erupted. That primary horn is already coming out. The secondary horn, you really can't see much. Are you kidding me? Jojo, stop being cute. How about, okay, let's talk about that mouth for a second. These are southern white rhinos. Southern white rhinos. But there's nothing white about them, is there? Nothing white at all about them. Their name, we believe, you saw my shadow. Their name, we believe, came from a misinterpretation of an Afrikaans word. When Europeans first heard them saying, talking about these animals, they were hearing a word that sounded like white. They heard a word that sounded like white. So they started calling them the Southern White Rhino. But what, they, what the term was referring to actually, what the word was that they were hearing, was a word for wide, not white, but wide. And you can see Linda using her wide lip right there. It can be a foot across. They're like these amazing vacuum cleaners on the plains, on the prairies where they're from, here on Watani grasslands. <laughs> How about that shot, huh? Kudos to Wendy, eh? You gotta get the best camera person this side of tomorrow. Great job, Wendy. So yeah, the southern white rhino is named for that wide lip. 
These are grazing rhinos. They're herbivores, they're plant eaters, but they're grazers. They're eating grasses from the ground. Other rhinos are actually browsers. They're reaching higher up into the trees to get leaves and branches. There's Jojo. Again, Jojo born February 24th. Weighing in right now just shy of 400 pounds. How amazing is that? And then Linda, Jojo's mom, 31 years old. Weighing in right now around 4,300 pounds. So JoJo's got some growing to do. You hear that little squeak? Yeah, people are asking what that squeaking noise is, Steve. That's just JoJo. JoJo's saying, hey, what's going on? Just a little communication from JoJo to mom, to JoJo to keepers. Jade and Stacy are still over here to the right. Can we get Jade and, St Jade and Stacy real quick? We've got a couple shout outs, but we want to get a shout out from you guys. We have Jade. Oh, hey, whoa. Jade on the left here, Stacy on the right. Um, since it's a wonderful day, we wanted to make sure that they had a chance to give a shout out to some of their family. Jade, who do you want to shout out to? I need to say hi to Callie, Abel, and Uriah. Hi. Do that again. I need to say hi to Callie, Abel, and Uriah. Hi, everybody. Hey, Stacy, how about you? I'm going to say hi to my Aunt Christy and Uncle Tim, and then my cousin Kelly, and my cousin Kristen, and all their kids, Cole, Shylin, Owen, and Adrian. Hi, guys. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And thanks for being here and letting us be an amazing day. I want to I want to do a shout out. Okay. We had this really cool opportunity. We had a family send a donation into the park, which is amazing. Um, but I want to read the note that they sent. How cool is this? No, the other side. The other side. Yeah, this is what they emailed us. You this is what they emailed us. If you can't read it, it was a $200 donation. Hats off to the wonderful zoo staff. I wish they would say staff for everybody here. The wonderful staff in education and CES and everyone who has been part of this new outreach program. Please share with everyone in education so they can know, one, they are very much appreciated, and two, they are definitely making a difference. This is money that they were not spending, and they donated to the North Carolina Zoo. It's their lunch money. Really? How sweet is that? She, she, she even thinks it's sweet. <laughs> so thank you guys so very That was such a kind um, offer. A kind recognition. We do truly appreciate that. And all of you making some amazing kind thoughts. If you are so inclined, you'll see a donate button this time. You'll see a donate button. It's been there a couple times. But if you're so inclined and if you have the opportunity to, we would love to see if you guys could make a donation to the North Carolina Zoo. I know it's challenging times for a lot of folks, but if you can find it in there, to make a donation, that would be fantastic. I'm not much of a salesman, but I was thinking, Wendy and I have noticed that we've got a lot of amazing views. The numbers have been really off the charts, and we can't thank you guys enough for everything you have done for us. And that math says, if we could get a buck or two from a lot of you, that'd be a huge chunk of change for the North Carolina Zoo. So if you have it and can and, and would like to think about it, Please click that donate button for the North Carolina Zoo today. Linda's got a great, or this is a great shot of Linda. Again, Linda is JoJo's mom. JoJo just named this morning. Thanks to the first lady. Yeah, Wendy's got a question. We have a question asking how long rhino moms are pregnant. How long are rhino moms pregnant? Human moms nine months great question considering mother's day is this weekend mother's is it this weekend yeah oh look there goes umgu can you get umgu yeah. umgu counts because it's a rhino umgu was born in january january 5th and that's umgu's mom kit as they walk around these two i'll get to your question in a second i promise these two you can see jojo remember jojo's was just named today just announced today they are getting along well um 
little shy still, as you might imagine. A little bit of learning, kind of, who are you? What's going on? Hollywood Connor just donated. Thank you, Holly. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Look at that interaction over there. How cool is that? As, as, as Wendy mentioned, Mother's Day coming up. So a little bit of mothers going on over there. Mom, again, that's Kit with Mgoo. And here comes, here comes the ostrich, Pearl. Linda's dominant. So Linda's going to say, hey, wait, what's going on? I want to see what's happening. All right, everything's okay. I can, I can relax again. So how long are so, they pregnant? Yep. So how long are they pregnant? So Linda and Kit were pregnant 16 months. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what That's exactly how Jojo was inside for 16 months. He's like, I'm out. She's out. I'm free. Not the longest, but 16 months. Great question. Thank you very much. Uh, they, we did have a question about, about the horn. Actually, they the horn? asked what, why do they have a horn thing? Why do they have a horn thing? They have a horn thing for a variety of reasons. You can get a nice shot of, Ki of um, Linda's horn here. Yeah. Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. <laughs> and then it's like, hey. It's like we cued her. That horn is really important to them. It's kind of like a multi-tool. It does a little bit of everything for them. It's a... <laughs> Sorry, Mgoo's like, hey, come on over and play, Jojo. Come play with me, Jojo. But the horn is really important. Again, it's a multi-tool. It does a little bit of everything for the rhino. Uh, that's been it can be used for defense, obviously. Males will use it in fights. Females will defend themselves and their young. They'll use it to dig. For water, they'll use it to dig for water, to find food, to knock things over, to intimidate. Stacy's going to give a little bit of a treat here to Linda for coming over. Here we go. <laughs> so, Stacy, since you're here real close, what is that? This is Timothy Cubes. Timothy Cubes? Which is just like hay in cube form. <laughs> Awesome. And apparently it's a favorite. I did hear that alfalfa is way up there on their favorite list. Yes. Alfalfa is their favorite and we use it for their top reinforcer. So whenever they do something uh, that is kind of hard for them or a new thing or we're learning a, a new behavior, then we use alfalfa because they're going to be the most motivated to get that treat. So it's my Snickers bar. Yeah. All right. <laughs> or ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you, Stacy. So come back to the horn for a sec. The horn is made of keratin. It's a fibrous hair-like material. Check this out. This is the tip of a horn. Get it in the sun over here. From Stormy. Stormy is actually dad to both Mgoo and Jojo. Stormy's not on habitat right now, but given the, given the calves kind of free reign for a little bit. But the horn, and it just broke off. You can see no, nothing major there. It's like the tip of your fingernail breaking off. But it's actually fibrous. Can you see inside there? Trying to get it up here. You tell me, Wendy, how's that? Yeah. If I come down a little bit? Stay right there. Stay right there. Yeah. I'll follow your instructions. Yeah, right there. So you can see those fibers. So it's like hair, modified hair. It's from keratin. Keratin is the same thing that your fingernails and your hair is made of. So it's the exact same thing. Your fingernails and your hair is made of. It's just a little stiffer. And it's just compact, wound together, kind of stuck together to form that horn. And then they shape it. And I say that kind of tongue-in-cheek. They're not doing it on purpose. But they rub it on branches. They rub it on rocks. Rub it on dirt. Rub it on poles and posts. And it gives it that unique shape. That sh horn shape is actually one of the ways, since I don't know them very well, that's one of the things I rely on to tell who's who. Linda's horn, I'm gonna see if I, can, I can't point to it in the shade, in the shadow. Linda's horn is long and a little skinnier. The primary, the first horn, is a long and a little skinnier. You see, that, you see that JoJo's is just starting. Kit's horn, Umgoo's mom, Kit's horn is thicker at the base, a little bit, looks a little bit thicker and bigger and stronger.
Kit loves, I'm sorry, Kit. Linda loves a good mud bath. They wallow around in the dirt and mud. You can see that line on Kit's side there. You can see where she's been getting into the mud. Why would a rhino wallow around in mud and dirt and get that Ashboro red clay coverage all over them? Why wallow in the mud and dirt if you're a rhino? You see elephants kind of do the same thing too. They toss mud on their back, but why would a rhino wallow in the mud and dirt? I can think of three main reasons. I can think of one, Steve. You can think of one? All right, Wendy. Wendy never gets to answer a question. What, why is that, Wendy? Um, it's a spa treatment. It's a spa treat. Oh, Wendy. I, Wendy. I mean, women pay a lot of money for mud baths. You're right. You're right. You're right, Wendy. Can you guys help Wendy out a little bit? I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing. So, <laughs> so they get in there. And they wallow around to and get that mud all over them to one. We've got good answers. We have Rick Disher said to cool off. Cool off, we absolutely. Had, uh, somebody said uh, sunscreen. Job, Rick. Sorry, I missed sunscreen. your Sunscreen, good job. So we're, get, we're, we're getting good answers. And you guys will put the last one on all the time when you go out on a summer day and you don't want to get eaten up by mosquitoes. Sunscreen, keep cool, and an insect repellent. So that mud is a really important thing for them. Acts as a sunscreen, acts as insect repellent, and does help keep them cool on a hot day. Here at the zoo, <laughs> being cute is tiring, isn't it? Not that I know. So good at Not it. Not that I know, but you are amazingly good at it, Jojo. Oh. Um, here at the zoo, the North Carolina Zoo, we do want to make sure we provide those wallows for them. We've created some. The keepers do take amazing care. And by the way, during, during coronavirus, during COVID, closed but still caring, the North Carolina Zoo is still here taking care of their animals, providing that world-class care that they're so well known for. The keepers here are so passionate, so dedicated to their animals. It's a 365-day 365 day a year job. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Am I saying that right? Yes, 365 days every every year, Steve. Every, except leap year. Except and that's this year. So yeah. I was wrong actually. This year is 366. Every day they've got to be here, right? Providing that premium care, that top notch care. Sometimes that means that they create wallows for the rhinos. They actually create a wallows for the rhinos here at the zoo. Sometimes they're not quite up to par. So the rhinos have been known to make their own wallows from time to time. Why? I wish I could tell you. I'm working on my rhino linguistics. It's not coming along very well. Got a question? Wendy has her hand up. We had a we had a good question um, about what they do and how they how they fare in the colder weather. What they do, how they fare in the colder weather. But these guys actually handle cold pretty well. They're going to be out to about 45 degrees or so. Great toss, Jade. Years of practice. <laughs> Years of practice. These guys can handle cold temperatures pretty well. So they're going to be outside till it's about 45 degrees or so. They actually have heated barns here at the zoo. If it gets too cold, they can be brought inside to those heated barns. Actually, Wendy, I'm gonna, or can I pull you away for a second, Wendy? Yeah. Can you show them back in that little space way, way back there? I'm going to point and you're going to show them. <laughs> way back there. I know it's hard to see, but I want you to see the idea. There's a fence. You can see the, green, the bright green grass way back there. And then beyond that are barns. And off to the right as well. You can see kitten and goo over there. Behind all those trees are also barns. So all of this space is available to the rhinos. When that fence is closed, what you have over here, what Wendy's showing you now, is the Watani grasslands habitat. And it is 40 acres in size. 
when we asked Jade what their favorite food was, she was kind enough to say alfalfa, they like the timothy, they like the hay. And then she also said, but green, fresh grass over their 40-acre habitat is their favorite food of all. So they graze out there on that massive habitat on the grass that's provided to them naturally here at the North Carolina Zoo. So great question. But they can handle colder temperatures than you might think. They can handle down to about 45 degrees. After that, they start saying, you know what, let's provide some supplemental heat. Let's share. Wendy, Wendy, back on Pearl. No, Rhino. Rhino, you want to see Pearl. Rhino, you want to see Pearl. Check this picture out. Check this picture out. Thank you, Cora. Cora sent that, the note that was sent attached with the picture. Cora's mom said she made it for the zookeepers to share with the animals, to cheer everybody up. How sweet, how kind. She had the keepers and the animals might be lonely without all the people. It's funny, we were talking to Stacy and Jade. It's so nice to be able to chat to people. And they said, you know what? We do miss the people. We do miss people coming because they want to share their animals, right? That's why they're here. They're dedicated, passionate people. And they take care of these animals, provide that ultimate animal care and wellness so you guys can visit with them. But thank you very much, Cora. That was very sweet. That was very sweet. We did have somebody ask, they came in a little late, how, how much the baby weighs. How much? Somebody tell her how much the baby weighs. I'm done talking. How much the baby weigh? <laughs> Born at about 100 pounds. Today currently weighs in at just shy of 400 pounds. She put on a Steve in two and a half months. She put on 300 pounds in two and a half months. That's crazy. I don't know if you caught that earlier. I was talking about Linda. She's the oldest female out of 31, oldest female on habitat. <clears throat> there is one other female here that is kind of retired, Olivia. Olivia's over 50. Lifespan of Ryan is about 40 to 50 under human care. But Linda's the dominant female. She's the oldest and the dominant. Weighs in, Linda, weighs in at around 4,300 pounds right now. How big can you they get? How big can they get? Abby is our largest rhino here at the North Carolina Zoo. We haven't met Abby. We hope to do that later on. We haven't met Abby, but Abby's our largest um, animal at the zoo, rhino at the zoo. And she weighs over 5,000 pounds. Thank goodness she doesn't speak English. Right? You're not supposed to tell the weight of a lady. But she's over 5,000 pounds. Males, now she actually weighs more than Stormy, our male. But male rhinos can get up to maybe six or 7,000 pounds. Jojo, by the way, is named after a keeper from Africa. Joseph Washira? I think that's right. I believe that's right. Was a keeper of Sudan, kind of a, a ranger over Sudan in Africa, at one of the African conservancies over there. Opajeta? He took care of Sudan, the last male northern white rhinoceros that ever existed. So we thought because of the care that he provided to Sudan and actually some other rhinos over there as well, it was a nice way to remember Jojo, to remember Joseph Washira. Munching on some hay is Linda. Linda's the mom again. Linda's also the steady Eddie. That's what Jade said. She, that, say, she said that Linda is just spot on. She knows the training routines. She's good at it. She is 
just knows what she's doing when she's training. And they actually started training Jojo. All the rhinos here are trained at some level. They all train to participate in their own health care. They can give, can do some blood draws, they can look at their feet, look at their eyes, look in their ears, just get a good broad overview of the animals. That is one of, that's one of last year's calves right there. And since Stacy's close by, that is? Nandi. That's Nandi. Those of you that have met our rhino calves la a couple years ago, that's Nandi. And that's, that's Linda's calf. So Nandi is Linda's calf as well. Nandi looking in at Jojo. Hey, what's up, sis? Full sisters. Jojo and Nandi. Stormy, Stormy the male to both of them. And you said that Nandi's hanging out with... Is that Natalie? Yeah. So Nandi's hanging out with Natalie. In, the, in their natural spaces, a lot of times the females will kind of form these bonds, these pair bonds. They'll kind of link together, hang out with each other. So Natalie and Abby were hanging out for a while, but when Nandi and Bonnie were born and now have grown up, that's so hard. <laughs> They're supposed to be calves still. I know. <laughs> they form different bonds. So there goes Natalie. You can see her horn much thinner. So as we learn these guys again, we'll be able to tell them apart by those horns. The southern white rhino is, is not endangered, but they are near threatened in their status. And unfortunately, they're being poached for that horn. Most recent numbers I've seen is around 10,000, but those numbers change pretty regularly. I saw a little bit more than 10,000 in numbers at one point. This is Natalie, for those of you tuning in right now. That's Natalie. And... Way over there. Did you get that? Did she get that into nursing? How cool is that? Umgu and Kit. Way over there. Umgu nursing. Umgu was born in January. Pearl, Pearl's blocking our shot. Pearl. There we go. <laughs> so, as we mentioned, rhinos are near threatened. Unfortunately, poaching is a big challenge for the rhino. That's what it is for a lot of animals. Poaching. That illegal hunting. Don't get sprayed. Rhinos will mark their territory sometimes by spraying urine. I want to make sure that, that um, Wendy didn't get sprayed. I don't think it's going to happen, but just wanted to get her out of the firing range there. Here comes Nandi. Nandi is Linda's calf, Linda's last calf. You can even hear the same noise from Nandi, a little bit of a, of a, of a whistle. Hi, Nandi. The North Carolina Zoo is involved in an amazing program called SMART, the Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool. And what it is, is a program, it's a software program that the zoo and its partners, but the zoo was key, is, was key in creating this program called SMART, the Spatial Monitoring and Reporting Tool. And what it is, the software program, they can They'll, it's given to rangers. It's essentially a really tough, ruggedized, handheld, I want to say phone, sort of. It's like it's a, it's a rugged, handheld computer. It's small, like a cell phone. Um, GPS enabled. So the rangers go out, and they're looking for signs of animals or signs of poachers. And when they find those signs, they're able to plug that data, plug that GPS signal, plug that location into that computer. When they round up all the data, they bring it back, put it into kind of like a main situation, and it populates a map. And with that data, they're able to then push rangers to certain locations. How about me just for a second? I want to show what I'm talking about real fast. So you've got that ruggedized computer. You put it into the thing. It creates a map. On the map, 
is where the activity is going. So behind me, all this activity. But we're seeing poaching activity in the far northwest. If we see poaching activity in the northwest, we're able to now direct our rangers more to that location. How neat is that? And it was created here at the North Carolina Zoo. Dr. Rich Burgle, part of that, and, some, and his team is Drew. Some of you might have met Drew Cronin earlier, also part of that. And some amazing partners involved in that spatial monitoring and reporting tool created here by Staff North Carolina Zoo in partnership with other folks. So really an exciting thing to be able to share that with you guys. Okay, now back to the rhinos. <laughs> we got a question. Let's go find a baby. We do have some questions. How long do they stay with their moms? How long do they stay with mom? Uh, two years. Two years isn't out of the question. That's relatively normal. You might find a little bit longer, depending on conditions. But two years is typical. So Nandi is a little over that, a little over two years old. Then Linda had her next calf. Linda had Jojo behind her, behind her over there, laying down, tired from being so cute. So two years plus or minus. Good question. See that big, huge hump on the, on the southern white rhinos? Full of muscle to hold up that 1,000 pound head. Really? 1,000 pounds just in the head? It's a very strong, strong animal. I think we are going to be able to get video of them going in with the rest of the crash. Should we go ahead and let... Oh, you think? Know? Yeah. Hold on a second. Let me see. All right, these guys can reach 30 miles an hour, guys. So let's see what happens here. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. We can check out Pearl because she's so cute. Pearl's waiting to tell everybody else the new the new calf's name. So what's the new calf's name, everybody? What's the new calf's name? You guys need to tell everybody. You guys need to help us share the news. The new calf, which was born February 24th is Jojo. Yeah, somebody squeaked over there to the right. So two and a half months old-ish. Pearl here is displaying a little bit. He's kind of showing off. <laughs> Don't want to lose the camera. No, that would not be a good thing. Look at the gate opening. Jojo is going to come out and share with the crash, the crash of rhinos, the name of a herd of rhinos is a crash. So Linda and Jojo are going to share the new name with the rest of the group. How about that? Again, thanks to the First Lady for announcing Jojo's name. Jojo named after a ranger in Africa, Joseph Washira, at the old Pajeta. Conservancy in Kenya. Thank you so much to Jade and Stacy as well. Awesome view of Jojo. What an amazing way to start the week, huh? A wonderful Monday. That was not my fault. A wonderful Monday from the North Carolina Zoo to you on your deck your living room, dining room, wherever you might be. So Linda letting everybody know she's still the dominant female, remember? That's also one of her daughters. Is that Abby? Yeah. So that's Abby. Abby, again, the largest female. We thought we were done wrapping things up, but you get a cool interaction, you got to share it. Abby is Kit's, or Abby is Linda's daughter, by the way. If I'm not mistaken, they said she was her fifth, fifth daughter. Is that right? Something that we know of for sure. <laughs> Abby, the largest female in the crash. That little instance, instance was done. Hi, Abby. What a great day. You can see the hairs on the horn right there. Remember, that, was, that horn's made of keratin. 
Carrots is a modified hare. <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> There's a nice training behavior you can tell the keepers have trained. <laughs> so we'll cheat with that one. We'll sneak that one in. That. So just because it happened, Stacy, why would you have? Why is that a training behavior? Why would you need her to open her mouth? Uh, so it's uh, mainly so that we can check their teeth. Um, so white rhinos, they're the kind of the oddballs of the five species. And so uh, it's kind of hard to see in their mouth. And so we trained the open mouth behavior so that we can kind of get a look at their teeth. But it's also really convenient to, uh, if we ever have to give them some medicine or, um, you know, specifically just give them a treat. Uh, so it works out. And it's fun for them. Then they come up and kind of beg, just like they did to the camera. Um, so she came over and was like, feed me, uh, and just kind of opens, opens her mouth. Because uh, just like horses, if anybody's familiar with horses, um, or really any hoof stock, as they eat, they'll kind of grind, they grind their teeth to chew up all that vegetation, and sometimes it'll wear little points, uh, which can poke their gums, and uh, so we watch out for that, and if we needed to, we would go in and uh, kind of smooth those down for them. Awesome. Thank you very much. Kind of a side treat there. We weren't, didn't know that was coming, and we're glad that it did. Last year's calves again. What a great day. You might, uh, we just saw uh, Linda poop. Oh, we did? In, in the pile. You might want to talk about what that pile of poop is. So Linda pooped in the pile? Yeah. She added to the midden, I take it. Ooh, fancy science word. So rhinos poop in the same place. That's a midden pile. That's where the poop is. And it's really important to them. Rhinos, they don't have the best sense of eyesight. Sense of hearing is good. Sense of smell is amazing. So believe it or not, these guys will poop in the same place, and that's called a midden. And in that poop, not quite lunchtime, right? Yeah, okay, we can, we can still do this. In, the, in that poop, it's all kinds of smells, as you might imagine. But not just what you and I had think of as a smell. They can smell pheromones. Certain hormones are in there. So an animal can come, another, another rhino can come by, smell the poop. Yes, they do that. They smell the poop. But it's telling the rhino something. Maybe there's a new rhino in town. Those are our two calves trying to say, who's play, who's who here? Who's the boss? Happens all the time. Pushing on somebody. Those are two half-sisters. Same dad, different moms. I don't know who's who. N N Nandi and Bonnie. So you guys have met Nandi and Bonnie before. This, I'm going to guess, is Bonnie. She's a little bit bigger, a little thicker. A little bit older. So this is Bonnie that just came up. So that midden, there's all the mud and the dirt and Wendy's showing you. So the rhinos will smell the poop piles to find out, is there a new rhino in town? Is somebody pregnant? Is somebody going to become pregnant? So a lot of information in that. It's kind of like their social media. It's kind of like their social media. It's like face poop. Face poop, I get it. Face poop, got it? I get it. Yay, me. Doesn't happen very often. Um, and the keeper, they're not going to get rid of it all the time. You don't want to delete their posts, right? You don't want to delete that information. So the keepers will let the pile stick around for a little while because of all the information that is maintained there. So the keepers will kind of clean them up over time as they go throughout the habitat. Great shot of JoJo again. Jojo and Linda. That's the reason that we're here today. Jojo's name was announced this morning by the First Lady of North Carolina. Thanks again to her for her assistance. All right, did you guys meet the Muppet? Did you guys meet the Muppet? I hope you've heard the Muppet. Muppet's wearing a toupee. Been working on, you guys have been very kind in your can say, I hey, can't hear, can't, see. you've been telling us information, and that feedback is vital. 
So this is the new microphone system. Hope it's working for you guys. You can hear better. So it's the Muppet. We won't always have the Muppet. We're going to on a lavalier mic eventually, but Muppet with a toupee. Wendy, me. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. You guys have your, been having your question answered by our team back behind the scenes. So thank you very much for that. Making sure that I'm not too close to any rhinos. Yeah, step forward a little bit. <laughs> there you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching and meeting Jojo, uh, our newest rhino calf. How neat is that? <laughs> it's so hard not to get the pictures, right? Um, Zoo Adventures, right? Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 o'clock. Now, Wednesday, do not, do not not tune in because of the topic. We are going to share information about snakes. Going to meet a couple snakes. You will be completely and totally safe because I will be holding the snakes. And there's this thing called digital space. <laughs> so you'll be totally safe. We'd love to inspire, to hope, that, to engage you guys in the role snakes play. And it's varied and it's unique. So we'd love to see you again Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock to learn about some of the snakes from our animal ambassadors here at the North Carolina Zoo. I think that does it from us. Wendy, do we need anything else? I don't want to leave, Steve. You don't want to leave? This is so awesome. It is awesome. Do you guys agree with Wendy? Of course. Oh, it's my hard. God, someone says, yay, snakes. Yay, snakes. Danger noodles. Gotta love them. Thank Woo! you, Rachel. Good job, Rachel. We'll see you guys Wednesday. Thanks again, guys. Steve from the North Carolina Zoo with Zoo Adventures. Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 10 o'clock. We'll see you again next week. Stay safe. We miss you guys. We can't wait to have you back at the North Carolina Zoo. See you later. Bye.